Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Isn't Jesus wonderful? How many of you can testify today that God has made you glad? <laughs> oh, man. He takes our shame. He takes our guilt. The Bible says we approach him. We're not guilty. He has acquitted us of all guilt and shame. Hallelujah. The Bible says for our shame, he'll give us double joy. Double for your trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you please tell somebody next to you, Jesus has made me glad. Come on.
are Lord of my situation. Lord Jesus, be Lord today in my life. Lord Jesus, be Lord of my thoughts, my decisions, and every step that I take. Now give him a praise if you meant it this morning. to hear that God does not have a plan B when it comes to you. The giftings and the callings of God, he said, are without repentance. That means when he put them in you, he put them in you to stay, to turn around and give them back to him and glorify him with. You're not too far gone. You haven't done too much. Come on. And those of you that have has experienced that, thought those things in the past, can you encourage those around you by just giving him a praise that you know, you tasted and seen that the Lord is good and that his mercies are fresh. So come on, tell me how every day he's not mad at you. Come on, God is not mad at you. He loves you with an everlasting, unconditional love. And the next step to grace is right here. One, one, when you said, Lord Jesus, from your heart, you were right back in grace. Hallelujah. You don't got to do nothing. You don't got to say nothing. But just now listen to him and walk according to his word, his spirit, because they agree. Can somebody say amen to that? All of the angels are rejoicing for one who has been saved, who has come home. I rejoice with them. Thank you, Jesus, for your plans and your purposes for their lives. In Jesus' name, in the church of the living God said amen. Hallelujah.
Jesus. You know, if there was a plan B in God's plan, that would mean his first plan was a lie. So, there you have it. Welcome to Heartland Church. Before we go any further, those of you that are first-time guests, welcome. It is an honor and a privilege to have you here today. Before I go to the next point, I'm going to tell you, our, our youth group is on their way back from Columbus, Texas right about now. So, Renovate Youth, I got a feeling Pastor Heath and, and Haley are probably tuned in down the road. So, we're just going to thank God for the shamar, the hedge of protection around our babies, our leaders, our Renovate Youth as they travel back to Brownwood, no weapon formed against them, or the vehicles they're driving will prosper in Jesus' name. Y'all come home safe. And please, one more stop at Bucky's. We do, we do like Bucky's. Thank you, Jesus, for his word. Our babies are protected. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't even have to hear a, a single testimony to know these kiddos are coming back changed. But how many of you know that these kiddos changed people's lives at, in Columbus, Texas at that camp? Our group is a powerful group of young people. I tell you what, God, God is working in them. All right, so today's a pretty big day. We've got a lot going on, and one of those many things is our membership class. So those that have been attending two months or more, uh, and you're ready to hook up with us, uh, we're going we're gonna to feed these folks uh, immediately after church service, and then we're going to go over a whole bunch of Scripture as it relates to what we do and why we do these things at Heartland Church. There's not any opinion, everything that this church stands for is word-based. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. And I think we, we think it's important for new members to know. And I'm going to tell you, if, if you have, maybe you've been a, a member of Heartland for decades and you didn't get the handout that we hand out at, at membership class, it is a tremendous study, a tremendous study. So, uh, if you haven't gotten one, see me, and I'll make sure that you get one. All right, so the bear hunt. I tell you what, this is a, this is a huge gift and is going to be a huge fundraiser. What we're going to ask is that we've got flyers. It, talk, it tells about how you can get your ticket, uh, your raffle ticket online. And so if you've got a business uh somewhere in town that you know folks well uh, and they need one of these flyers in their window, uh, we've got those. Be sure you pick one up, take a couple with you, and, and get them out there. Uh, that date of December 22nd for the drawing is uh, is approaching. That is our projected date, so we want to get that taken care of. That is, that is a huge, huge gift. Read the flyer. Um, is the video still on our page? That video is amazing. I tell you what. So anyway, uh, be sure and get that. That the value of that for what you're going to invest. Actually, the value to Heartland Church is amazing. This is the, the sweet, sweet gift uh, to this body. Quick note on children and the new children's building. Ten fifteen on Sunday mornings is when those doors will open to your kiddos. Okay, because we've got children staff that are getting the room ready, getting themselves ready, getting the lesson ready. So they need a little preparation time. So if you would, uh, kids can start going out there at 1015 on Wednesday nights. That's 645. Okay, so just a, just a reminder uh, there. Ladies, be sure and get a bulletin because you've got a date to save coming in February. The Better Together Women's Conference in which our very own Pastor Jody Studdard will be uh, teaching, so it's gonna it's gonna be a good time. I tell you, we we've got we walk in favor with God and with man, and the opportunities opened up to the leadership of this church and to us uh, every day are, are 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 just amazing. I would say renovate youth, check your schedule, but they're all there on the road here. So uh, I got a feeling Pastor Heat and Haley will get those things taken care of. 
When I talk about us being a growing church, you look at the bottom right-hand corner of your bulletin, you see children's church, the kids' church with uh, Bo Miss Bonnie. Precious, pre I tell you what. <laughs> You've got Russell Coleman. I bet he's out on the door this morning with uh, double digits. You've got Renovate Youth with Heath and Haley. You've got Ecclesia with Brian and Mandy Calloway. I guess your kiddos are mostly gone for Christmas, or is that coming? Still got a healthy group here in town. So it's not, I'm not telling you they're gone because they're not going to meet. I'm just saying there's a lot of Howard Payne students that are uh, taking Ecclesia with them. And you've got one young man that's going far away, if I'm not mistaken, in Indonesia. Good gracious. Uh, and uh, so there's, there's a lot going on for every age group uh, that you can imagine. So uh, be ready for that. Uh, ugly Christmas sweater service, December 22nd. Christmas sweater, Christmas onesie. <laughs> no, I know. Wow. I did. I've seen some posts about a suit for our pastor that I'm, he, he would wear it. Ab absolutely. <laughs> it's okay on Christmas, but the thing is, Sometimes we want to wear them in April. I mean, it's just that good looking a suit. So be ready for that December 22nd. And it's just a fun time as we prepare for, by the way, no services Wednesday the 25th uh, so that you can celebrate uh, with your family. Uh, there we go. I want to read a little something to you out of First Chronicles. There's a particular, well, First Chronicles is not in the Passion Translation as of yet. But they do have a new Genesis uh, translation. And Isaiah, I haven't read the Isaiah. I want to read that because Isaiah is a beautiful, uh, beautiful book anyway. First Chronicles chapter 29. Let's get down to about... Verse, let's see, start with verse, uh, we'll go with verse 3. So David's talking to the leaders, the warriors, the captains, uh, the, tri the leaders of the tribes, and he's telling them, now because of my devotion to the temple of my God, I am giving all of my own private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction of the temple. Of course, remember now, God told David, I can't let you build the temple. You've got blood on your hands. So his son Solomon is going to get the plans. David says, I am donating more than 112 tons of gold. That is approximately, in today's money, approaching $50 billion just in gold. Okay? That's not the 262 tons of silver uh, to be used for overlaying the wall. So we go on, um, and it says, Then the family leaders, the leaders... Now, first, David says, Now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? Then the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, the generals, the captains of the army, and the king's administrative officers all gave willingly. It doesn't say... Over a span of time, they gave willingly. Over a span of years, eventually. No, he's talking real time. And these folks, just like you and me, gave about 188 tons of gold. So now we're, we're headed north towards a hundred billion dollars. Remember that David, at the beginning of this, tells him, I've, I've already laid up everything to build the temple. I've got that. So there's the, I have what I need, but I'm going to give some more. And then I'm going to ask you to follow my example, and they gave more. But most importantly, at the end, Verse 9, it says, 
silver, bronze, precious stones. I mean, they were, they were emptying their pockets, their mattresses, their pillows, their little safes, whatever. They were pouring this out to God. The people rejoiced over the offerings, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord, and King David was filled with joy. And he says this, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours. O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. You are at his discretion, and you are made great and given strength. David and the people worship God through their giving. That is so appropriate for us today. Not only do we honor God with the tithe, but we worship him because of what he's done in our lives. Y'all, I've driven by Walmart, driven by Bath and Body Works, driven by some big malls and big cities. We are a blessed nation. I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what situation you might be in, I'm going to tell you, you are blessed to live in the greatest nation on this planet, the greatest God-fearing nation in the world. Your Christmas might not be everything that you'd hoped it would, but it's more than most everybody else on this planet outside of the United States of America. And it's because of him. It's because of him. The car you drive, the house you live in, it's because of him. So we worship him today in giving. Father, we do. We, we lift up the name of Jesus today. We thank you, Father, that Lord, you've gone before us. You have prepared our way. Lord, that you are eternal. Your love is eternal. Your mercies are new every day, and they are eternal. Your gifts to us, your blessing on us is eternal. We thank you, Father, for the love that you have shown us. Lord, that your love was shown through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your love to us is shown through his resurrection and that he is the, at the right hand of the Father today. We honor you with the tithe today, Lord Father. It's yours. It is the part that is set apart and holy. We worship you with it. We honor you with it. We, are, we recognize your abundance and your blessing in our lives through the tithe presented to you. And, Lord, in this season of giving, we worship you and praise you with gifts to family, to friends. Lord, it's sowing. And we know that as we sow, we reap. And so, Father, we as a body stand ready with the sickle of our words, ready to harvest what you have provided us. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you that because your word says it's so. The tithe, seed sown, Lord Father, no matter what it looks like, will be fruitful and it will multiply. And it multiplies, Lord, so that we can be the hand of love in other people's lives. Thank you, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, normally right about here, I would do uh, birthdays and anniversaries, benefits of membership, just saying. So if you have a birthday this today or this week, please let us know. If you're a member of Heartland Church, those that are fixing to be members, your name is going to be on that list. Pastor Jody.
Praise God. Before Pastor Jason comes up, I just wanted, y'all know that honor is always right. Amen. I wanted to honor a very special person in the house, Captain Zena Salazar. Would you stand, baby? Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for your service. We thank you for what you're about to go do, and you'll have the grace to do it. Amen. If you'll remain standing and give that same honor to Pastor Jason Stutter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Let's worship him right quick. While we're here, let's praise him. Let's give him the glory. Let's prepare our mind to receive and our heart to hear and make that adjustment that what we hear, we're going to walk it out. We're going to carry it out. We have an ear to hear, an ear to hear with intent to act upon it. Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the written word and the spoken word. And Father, we believe today that lives will be touched in a special way by the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can prick the heart. Only the Holy Spirit. And we look to you today. Our goal, Father, is to hear the Spirit of God and to rightly divide the word of truth. That's our, that's our goal. That's our, our, our duty. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. Well, I'm going to be flat honest with you. We had a handout all prepared for you. I'm just really excited about it on balancing the legal and living side of grace. Or you could call it balancing the positional and the practical side of grace. And congratulations, nurse. <laughs> and... Um, and then we, we stepped up and we began praying this morning over the service. And, man, I just had such a strong, just, just pull on my spirit. So we wrote the scriptures down right quick, and we're going to go with that. And I want us to continue on the thought that we were about a week ago on spiritual discernment. I believe the Lord would have us look at that today. When I say I, I would like to, I'm saying I believe the Lord, I believe that's where we need to be, even if it's for five minutes and then we hand a handout out. But, but he's the administrator. Huh? The Holy Spirit is the administrator of the Lordship of Jesus. Come on. The Holy Spirit is that. He's the administrator of it. He administrates the lordship of Jesus. Say, teach me, Holy Spirit. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, please. Let's go there. Start there. Colossians 1, verse 9. We'll read verse 9 and 10. We'll be in the New King James today, please. Spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment spiritually discerned listen for you to follow the plan of God for your life you have to know how to be led by the spirit oh, come on you, you just there's no other way around that you have to be sensitive to his spirit then you learn how to separate you know your soul feelings passions from the leading of the Spirit. I bet all of us, if you've ever been real serious about following God's plan for your life, all of us have just known we were being led by God and really it was just discontentment, come on, anger, come on, frustration, upset with others, whatever. Bored, boredom is a great thing. The, the cure for spiritual boredom is acting on the Word, really. Being a doer of the word, that, that's, that's the cure for spiritual boredom. But you can do it out of boredom. You can do it out of, you know, lack of endurance, lack of spiritual cardio, so to say. But to follow God's plan for your life, you have to know how to be led by the Spirit of God. The only way you learn the Spirit of God is, number one, the written word of God. Number two, time spent with you and him. I'm talking about alone. I'm talking about 
seeking, asking, and knocking. Come on. Asking and asking. Those are, uh, those are verbs and they're, they're continual present tense verbs. Asking and seeking and knocking. Asking and seeking and knocking. And, and the Spirit of God will begin to visit you in special ways. He'll, he'll, he'll minister to you. And you'll begin to learn that, that tug of Him. You'll learn to discern the difference between your spirit and the Holy Spirit. And they're, they're, they're one. That's, that's the you that is one with the Holy Spirit. And you and the Holy Spirit live in your body. And you're updating and upgrading this soul by the Word of God being transformed so that you can come out. Because this isn't you. This is just the house that literally the Bible calls it the tent, a, a temporary house, the tent that you live in. So you learn how you learn, and it's called spiritual discernment. Say that spiritual discernment. I'm not talking about a gift of criticalness or a gift of judgmental. Sometimes people think they've got a gift of discernment, and really they're just bitter. Come on, they're bitter. It's just it's bitterness because spiritual discernment is an internal thing primarily for you to be able to it's so vital in any meeting place church gathering it's so vital that you know listen to me whether or not the word being preached and taught is being rightly divided or not I could lead you to a ditch intentionally huh? come on now I could tell you funky things that I grew up into. You know, if you don't give enough, God's going to take your firstborn. I'm not sure how I'd handle that these days now if anybody told me that. I'd probably start with saying, Jesus, God, God gave his own firstborn for me and my firstborn. You know, so God ain't into my firstborn. He don't need my firstborn. God never did that. You know, people will bring up the plagues. You know, we try to stay real rounded. Well, preacher, I caught you in here. What about the firstborn and the plagues of Exodus? Well, that's a whole picture is what God was painting. Out of all the plagues, none was good enough or qualified or could pay the price enough to let God's people go except the death of the firstborn. And that's the picture of God gave his firstborn and that let the people go. And you've been let go because of Jesus, the God's firstborn. But if you don't know the written word of God, and then you have to know, listen, in Bible translation, there, there's two types of translation. There's word-for-word -word translation. That's by the Greek, the Aramaic, or the Hebrew. And that is, that is, that is in the interpretation of that word. Then you move to the next, that word. Then you move to that word. Then there's interpretation that is called thought for thought interpretation. And some translations, most of them are good. There's some that are very good and there's some that are just outstanding. But there's thought for thought translations where you may read a whole verse and then they may translate that to capture the thought of that verse. Does that make sense? What I'm saying is this. It's so vital that you know the written word of God, but that you know the heart of the Father. Because <laughs> I could use scripture here in this house today and just whip you to pieces now and make and listen uh, many of you would accept it I'm telling you if I presented it a certain way with some Hebrew words Greek words but didn't have the heart of God behind it you'd accept it a lot of you would accept it you'd leave condemned blame shame not good enough not measuring up can't live up to God's standard of righteousness then you lead people long enough like that, then you start getting into their pocketbooks in an unclean way. Now you got them trying to purchase from God. Purchase from God. Come on, somebody. 
I mean, a lot of preachers ain't going to say this thing. I'm just trying to break it off real. Then, that's, then, then, then what you do is you don't ever equip the people. You, keep, you want to build a mentality in them that they need you. Come on, somebody. That you need me. I'm the one here that hears from God, not you. Well, that just ain't right. <laughs> because if you got the Holy Spirit, you've got the capability of hearing God too. Matter of fact... Before you even received Jesus, which really you received the Holy Spirit, you couldn't even have come to Jesus had you not heard the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so the lost can hear God. <laughs> Jesus, matter of fact, in John 5, he said, there's coming a day that everybody's going to hear my voice and those that hear will rise to a new life. <laughs> but it was the Spirit of God that visited me when I was playing in the bars, man. Uh -huh. It was the Spirit of God that was speaking to me when I was practicing hoodlinism. <laughs> come on, come on. Anybody in here ever practice sin? Just step out. Be, mm -hmm. Those of you that can't raise your hand, we'll deal with deception maybe next Sunday. <laughs> You're practicing it right now by not raising your hand. <laughs> Duped and don't know it. Come on. But... You have to be able to hear the voice of the Spirit. More people, listen, listen. And I'm going to tell you something right quick. Just I believe God would say this, just insert here. You've got to be very especially careful after you've had a major victory. When you've had a major victory, listen to me. When you've, when you've had breakthrough, you have to be very spiritual discerning because it's easy to let down your guard and listen to me, you step into pride and pride goes before the fall. And it's very important. Here's one of the best examples I can find. Second Samuel, what is it? 10, 9, 10, somewhere in there. It says that David sent some men to help a man, sent his captains to help a man out. The man said, who does he think he is? Like I need help. And the Bible says he, that, that king took David's captains and cut their beards off. That's an ultimate shame to the to Jewish people. Cut their beards off and cut their garments in the back up right above their buttocks. Shame. That's where we literally get the term bare assed, embarrassed. That's where we get that term. To expose. Says they, they then he let them go and they went back to David. And David said, Boy, he, the leader, he gathered his people up to him. And he encouraged them and he said, He said, Just stay close till your beards grow back out and then we'll go. I'll get with you again. He said, And come back then. So he's not being hasty. Come on. Got to be careful when somebody embarrasses them you love. What's God saying? Got to deal with it, I promise. He'll always uphold the righteous. Come on, somebody. Is, is there any righteous that are glad? Oh. Well, says that their beards growed out, and they came back to David, and David gathered up, gathered up people. And he went and he killed 400,000 of their chariot men and he killed 70,000 of this men and he killed, I mean, it was a huge day of slaughter. They got back. Next verse. And when the time of the year came that the kings go out to battle, David stayed behind and he saw a woman bathing on top of the top of a house. And he thought, I'm going to stay home. Now he's, now he's, he, he's, he's, He's idle in his grace gift, an office gift. And he fell into something he regretted the rest of his life. Come on. Anybody besides me ever done anything that you regret to this day and wish you could turn? But you know what? Listen to me. You can't. And there's nothing you can do that will pay a good enough price. But listen to me. What's wonderful is when you can come to the place of truth to know that wasn't me. 
yeah, yeah, I was there. I'm not denying it. I'm, I, yeah, I did it. But it wasn't me. Because me was fighting the whole time my body. I was allowing uh, the passions to drive me. Come on. But, but the Word of God says it wasn't me that was doing it. It was sin that lives in my body. Anybody say amen to that? And so I think it's wonderful that even though he, he stepped into that, that God said he's a man that is so after my heart. And the Bible says that in the end, it'll be the keys of David that are restored. Isn't that wonderful. So I just want you to know today that no matter where you've been, what you've done, how far you might have fallen, I want you to know that God is not holding that against you. And if anything bad's ever come of it, my friend, I can, I, I can show you from the Word if we had time that God didn't ask you or make you pay that consequence because of some evil decision or bad decision or carnal or just natural decision you made. God will, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, not, not bad things. Jesus didn't say God will put certain things on you so you can learn. No, he said the Holy Spirit will teach you. And he teaches you the same way he taught Jesus, and that's the inward witness of the Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? So I want you to receive that in the name of Jesus. People say, boy, I tell you what, God got that man's attention. Well, listen, let's, be, let's help with that. No, what happened was something happened. Because in this life, you have tests and trials. But what happened is in that test and trial, that man looked to God. And that's how God got his attention was the man gave his attention to God. But God didn't put something evil on him to say, I'm going to get your attention. Listen, if, 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 if God, listen, if you did to your children just three of the hundreds of things that people blame God for doing you wouldn't have your children right now come on somebody CPS would have them if you did just two or three of the things to your children that many many people that they really they love God but they don't know truth they don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth they don't know the heart of the behind the scripture come on the letter alone kills the spirit of the of the letter gives life so so you have to make sure are they ministering letter or are they ministering life Jesus said my words are spirit and they impart life the flesh profits nothing huh? 2 Corinthians 3 said we in this covenant are ministers of the spirit not ministers of law then he calls it the ministry of life. Then he calls it a ministry of righteousness. Then he calls it again the ministry of the Spirit. So if you don't know the heart of God, come on. Have you ever one time been misread? Raise your hand. Come on. Come on. Welcome to the ministry. Not really. You've been mis misread. Have you ever had anybody come to you? I have and say you know they think this about you and they're saying this and, and you know inside me something just <laughs> and literally, listen listen if you still have the attitude of I don't give a rip what they think that's not the heart of God either and, and to find balance if you're wired a certain way especially choleric melancholy <laughs> it seems like you go from here to here and then somehow you slowly come to balance <laughs> But you must visit the ditch of the hell with what you think, and you must visit the other ditch, and then somehow God brings you back to the middle of, God, I want to be like you. Well, but you felt misread. And really, listen, people that know you 
would probably say, I promise there's no way he would mean that like that. There's, trust me, I know him. That's not his heart at all. I promise you that is not her heart. That's the same way it is with God. If you don't know the heart of the Scripture, you can't rightly divide it. Come on. But when you know the heart of the Father, you know the spirit in which he is speaking from. A false prophet is not one who says the wrong thing. No, 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 no. He's one who speaks from a wrong spirit. These servants of the, are the servants of the Most High God. They show you the way of salvation. And Paul turned around and cast the devil out of that same voice. Right words, wrong spirit. So that's why it's, it's so important that when we gather together, one of the primary reasons we gather together is not to get you full again. You're to live full. That's your responsibility. That's not my responsibility to fill you up. No, it's your job to feed me, Reverend. Feed you, but not make sure you're an overcomer, not make sure that you're winning in life, not make sure you hear the voice of God, not make sure that you make all the checkpoints that God is destined for. That's, that's on you. Not to make sure that, that you're living in peace with everybody. That's your job. I can control the actions of one human, me. You are your own custodian spiritually, not me. That's on you. The so, Mark 4, and the sower sowed the word. The rest of the chapter, the sower's not even mentioned. It's on, it's on the four types of ground now and the word. <laughs> and the sower sows the word. Done with the sower. <laughs> I'm serious. He sowed the words on you now. Are you here? So you have to know not just the letter. Oh, this is good. You have to know the spirit in which something is being said. I'm just being honest. It's, it's our church, all of us, not mine. It's, not your, it's our church, so... As long as it's not ungodly or not led by the Spirit of God, and I believe it'd be okay to say something. It turns my spirit completely off when I hear things like, now listen, I'm a sower. I believe in sowing. I tithe and I sow. We do a lot of almsgiving. We give a lot what we would consider a lot of money away, just in secret. Almsgiving is when you don't let each, you don't, don't let anybody know what you're doing. That's what he meant by not let this hand know what this one's doing. That's a Jewish, Jew people understood that. He's just saying, keep that secret and protect their dignity and you don't expose, hey, God bless you. Hey, you need no, nobody needs to see you do that. Just be a blessing. But cover their dignity. They don't want everybody knowing they're broke and can't, can't buy groceries. Like you wouldn't. So just be a blessing to them. Hug them, shake their hand. God yeah. bless you. Yeah. Oh, I can't receive. Yeah, you can. Just be blessed. <laughs> be blessed. We do a lot of that. We sow into other ministries. We tithe to Heartland Church. And we sow into Renovate Youth. We sow at times. We put offerings to Ecclesia. But, so saying that, I preface that to say this. It's instant turn off in my spirit when I hear any minister say, for want, just try to make it up here like, if I can't, they'll say something like this. Well, it's December what? What's today? The eighth, okay. I believe if you'll sow $80, there's a special anointing. I'm being honest. My flesh I mean it. I want to crank somebody when they say stuff like that. And it, it upsets me, but that the people are not more equipped. Listen, listen, if God wants me to give 80 bucks, I'll, man, I'll throw it down if the Spirit of God leads me to. But how can you biblically and scripturally say, that if you sow all of you a particular amount 
There's a new anointing. The anointing's always new. <laughs> it's new right now. You just got to get in it. <laughs> if, 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 if the majority of the ones that are trying to sow for more and trying to get people to sow for more, if they was walking in a tithe of the anointing that Jesus has already dumped out, Oh. This prophetic man, I'm telling you, we got a handout, but we're just not there today. If you'll give this much money, God's going to give you the victory. If you knew 10% of the victory that the resurrection of Christ has already produced for you, you're sowing for victory all the time, be dealt with and done. I believe it's sowing. Don't get me wrong. There's times God will in, instruct, give them a more. Times we put several hundred dollars. It was a lot for us in the hand of a person. Believing for Caleb's breakthrough. Caleb didn't know it. He just now heard it. Sam didn't know it. Grandkids didn't know it. No. It has to be enough that God knows it. Because listen, the tithe is the 10%. But tithing, come on, that's done with the mouth and the heart. The tithe is the 10%. That's the substance. But tithing, the verb, come on, that's done with the heart. And Deuteronomy tells us what to say. I have brought that which you've said to bring, and I have not spent it on my own. It's the first. And I bring it. But tithing is done with the heart and the mouth. Come on. Well, if I don't tithe, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my salvation. You're not rightly dividing the word. You should never, no minister, boy, I don't know why we're on this, but this is good. No minister ever should use fear tactics to get you to respond. If he's not giving us a spirit of fear, then don't try to put me in fear. Because you're not going to condemn me. <laughs> You can't condemn me. You can't preach hell hot enough to get condemnation on me. <laughs> Listen, I have practiced sin and experienced the love of God. You can't condemn me. Believe me. Are you here, somebody? I have been practicing sin and been embraced by the love of God. So you forget about condemning me. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But you've got to know the heart of your father and you've got to right, be able to rightly divide the word of God. Otherwise, you listen, for many years I lived condemned. That's why I hate H-A-T-E yeah. to see anybody from, from the pulpit made to feel guilty or condemned or, or not, if they're not being equipped or seeing a minister training his people that you need me, that you need me. A leader will produce other leaders. A dog begats dogs. A horse begats horses. A leader begats leaders. It's called discipleship. Come on, huh? But you have to know the heart of the Father. You can't listen. Come on. You can't. You have to be careful. You have to know. Paul said, hold fast to that which is good. Yeah. Well, okay, what about this? Well, all the word is good. It is good, and it's all inspired by God. It is inspired by God. Some is inspired to the Jews, some's inspired to the Gentiles, and some's inspired to the church. Now, what category are you? Because you can't put in on my piece of the pie and try to get me to swallow what Jesus is only saying to the Jews. <laughs> here's, here's, we're just going to try to be led, okay? Here's one, I believe, of the most abused scriptures. He that in, and it'll be said in churches, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That makes people question their salvation. He, but he that endures to the end, that's the one that's going to be saved. He that endures to the end, that's the one that's going to be saved. Now, now you got me checking myself. Am I saved? First of all, 
I present as ex exhibit A <laughs> that that is Matthew chapter 24. He is writing to, he's, a, he's speaking to the Jews and he's talking about the time of the tribulation and the church is already gone. <laughs> and he told them, when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the temple, you're not going to see that. You're going to be in heaven at that time. <laughs> We're in Revelation chapter 5 at that time gathered around the throne. And when the Antichrist sets his, his throne up in the, the temple of God in Jerusalem, that's the abomination of desolation that Daniel and Ezekiel and others wrote about. He, he told them, when you see this, who's you? Jews. He said, but he that endures to the end, the same will be saved. That ain't writing, that ain't writing to me. I'm saved. He's, right, he's talking to Jews that at that time, listen, they didn't even believe he was the Messiah. Exactly. Are you with me, anybody? And he's talking to a lot of them in future tense that are going to finally come to grips and receive him as Messiah and be saved. He's not talking to me. I guess we're talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God said it. No, he didn't. Job said it. Man doesn't live by, by bread alone, but by every word that would come out of the mouth of Job. No. <laughs> no, every word that come out of the mouth of God. Let me ask you this. Are you filled with the Spirit? You believe you're led by the Spirit? Have you ever said one thing that was not God prom promoting you to say? Then so could Job. And you do it filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on. Be able to divide, the rightly divide the word of truth. Is that the right words? Yes, that's what God said. Is it the heart of God that's ministering what God said? <clears throat> Man, that's good. There are some who love to minister the word, but they don't love the people whom they minister the word to. That's a different. That's different. It's one thing to love to minister God's Word. It's a whole other thing to love the people whom you are ministering the Word of God to. Come on, somebody. That's where the heart of the Father is. Well, you have to know. You have to be able to rightly divide the Word of truth. You have to know the heart behind it. You can say the right words, listen, and not have the heart of the Spirit on it. And you'll know. It just wasn't, it wasn't the heart of God. Yeah. You leave, leave that with God, but it just wasn't the heart of God. But to, but, but to fulfill God's plan for your life, you have to be able to discern spiritually we're going in 2020 saints where we're headed you can't be led by your head you can't be led come on you can't be led by your feelings you can't make decisions come on this good you can't make emotionally driven decisions not in 2020 say in 2020 I cannot make emotionally driven decisions I have to be led by the Spirit of God. So good. Can't make hasty, emotionally driven decisions. I knew a leader, and I respect it. He said, don't ever come to me with high emotions because I'm not going to hear you. That's good wisdom. Boy, I watched people that worked for that man get very irritated. Wasn't that he didn't want to hear you. But you're not going to force me to make a decision just because you're torqued. Just because you're a bad planner doesn't mean, doesn't constitute an automatic emergency on my part 
to bail you out. And while we're talking, let's just say this. As we go into 2020, it's important to understand this. As a church, we bless a lot of people, but you, everybody needs to also understand the church ain't your savings account. It's not your emergency fund account. Somebody say amen. And all my leaders, please say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> It's not your emergency fund account. It's not our responsibility to make up for your lack of discipline or your failure to budget or because you want, you refuse to not spend more than you bring in. It's not, it's not my, I am not obligated at that point huh? to give you a weekly love offering until your debt's paid. Uh -uh. No, that's, it's not my money, it's God's money. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we gotta be we gotta understand these things though as we go on in twenty twenty. We gotta to be one, we've gotta be one on all these issues, huh? It's God's money. Well, I'm a tither and I put it in there. Well, I am too, and I put my part in there too. You did your part. But it's God's money. It's God's money. And I tell you. There's more ministers and ministries go under for two reasons as, as male pastors. Two reasons most churches go under. Number one, sexual immorality. Number two, finances. Not good with finances. That's the number two causes. There's others, but that's the top two in that order. Sexual immorality. Come on. Hallelujah. Accountability's good. That's why doors don't close. Why I don't counsel a woman alone. It's why, it's why if a woman comes in my office, you, you better not close that door behind you. That door stays open, see? Yeah. Come on. There's times ECs might be working at the office. We live right across the house. Listen to me. Let's say it's at night, and believe me, she's well protected, okay? So don't make, get no stupid ideas or nothing. That wouldn't happen in the house. I'm just, I'm just saying. She's well protected. Listen, I'm not going to go over there when she's alone over there. Why? Because I don't trust me? No. <laughs> no. Well, do you trust her? Yeah. Yeah, we're both very happily married. This is why. One, it's dishonoring to that man. That's how I feel about it. That's my conviction. It's dishonoring to Chris. Number two, we're to do everything as though it's under a glass table so that there's no reproach that could be even, even nothing even brought up or blamed. Huh? There's been lots of times I've needed to get something out of my office. I go in the office, I get it, and I go out. Come on. We're, just talking, about, we're talking about integrity and rightly dividing the word of truth. Going into 2020, how do you stay relevant and not compromise? Come on. There's an art. <laughs> but we have 2020 vision. We got to be led by the Spirit of God. I, think, I want you to think over just right quick of all God did by His Spirit through obedience of people. Look at all God did in 2019. Come on. Look at all that God done. And where we're headed in 2020, in the new youth building. Come on. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to build a nice range for the detail. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to God. Let's read a scripture. We might as well pull a text. <laughs> Colossians 1. <laughs> you getting anything today? Yeah. It's vital. You have to be able to discern something spiritually. It's not emotional. It's discerned by your spirit. Say, my spirit. Yeah, you want to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, but you've got to be in tune to your spirit. Not just So many times I think believers still, I have to make sure I don't, we try to hear the Holy Spirit, we somehow try to get up lofty up in the air. No, hang on, right in here. He's right in here, say that, he's right in here. He's right, yeah, he's right in here. 
So that's where you hear from your spirit. It's, it's, it's right down in here, deep down in here. Yeah. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Let's read it together, please. Let's read this together. Ready? For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. All right. Filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So filled with the knowledge of his will is going to be by being filled with wisdom and spiritual understand you can have three four doctorate degrees and not have a lick of spiritual understanding it's spiritual understanding the understanding of spiritual things come on next verse this is the results of that verse 10 that you may walk worthy of the lord fully pleasing him you and only you, me and only me, know if my walk is pleasing to the Lord. See, now you're not talking about legal side. You're talking about living side. You're not talking about positional side. You're talking about practical side. And it's nothing like knowing inside, I'm pleasing God. I'm pleasing God. I know he's pleased. I know I'm pleasing to God. Isn't that wonderful? I didn't say, I know I never make a mistake. I said, I know I'm pleasing to God. Isn't that wonderful? And notice the result of that is this. Being, that's an always present word. Being and being and being and being and being fruitful and being fruitful and being fruitful in every good work and increasing and increasing and increasing, being fruitful and increasing, being fruitful and increasing in the knowledge of, Listen, in God's knowledge. God's knowledge. Well, that's what he prayed that we'd be filled with and spiritual understanding. Come on. Now, I want you to look at this verse right quick. Let's go to Hebrews 5, verse 12. Let's pick this up right quick. We're learning. Come on. God's taking us somewhere good. More than anything, we want to fulfill his plan. When we live in the secret place, man, that's where no weapon formed. Huh? Come on. That's that place. Hebrews, what did I say? Hebrews 5.12. I want you to read this. Now, just stay open to it. This verse can tend to try to lock some people down, but it's just the principle. 12 to 14. Ready? Let's read it. For though by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Now, I'm not declaring that over this church. I don't believe we're there. We're not there. Any of us could find ourselves there, but as a church, we're not there. But I want you to get the principle. Next verse, please. What's this? For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Now, he's not just saying you're unskilled in knowing the legal side of Jesus, of what Jesus did. For he's a babe. Watch this right here, verse 14. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Remember what we've been talking about. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Let's pull verse 14 in the New Living Translation, pretty please, if we could. New Living Translation, verse 14. Let's read it. Ready? Solid food is for those who are mature. Okay, who's the mature? Who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and and wrong. What does the passion say in verse 14? Yeah, this is good. The passion in verse 14, please. Let's look at that right quick. But solid food is for the mature whose spiritual senses perceive heavenly matters. 
and they have been adequately trained by what they've experienced to emerge with understanding of the difference between what is truly excellent and what is evil and harmful. If you don't listen, listen that's the mature. Well, I've been in this 23 years, young lad, lad, laddie. I'm mature. No, that's mature. <laughs> if you don't have that, come on, you're just not mature. Bible said so. Without that, saints, listen to me. I've done it. Others can do it. We get free from it by that and that alone. You can swear something is right and it is evil. I've heard people call brother or so and so, they're such a saint. I knew according to the word, they're evil. Saint don't run down and dog folk. I'm talking about this lady could stand in the bedroom and lick a spoon in the kitchen. Her tongue, tongue, that's how long her tongue was. I'm serious. That's, that, 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 that's evil. Bible calls it evil. And you might have a tendency to think that whatever, whatever, that's so, that's no, so unright. And God can say it's, it's right. You can come into a church service and man's order is chaos with God. God's order can look very chaotic to a very denominationalized person. I'm telling you, they're standing up, some doing this, I'm running around the aisle, just dumping up and down, hollering, victory is mine. <laughs> the order of God, freedom in the spirit, people being free, people being loosed, or you can have people just sitting there like this, like frogs on logs, and everybody's bound, and shh, we don't talk in church. We are the church. <laughs> so don't do that in church. You're the church. If you can't do it in here, you shouldn't do it out there. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <Are you> weird? <laughs> That's like telling you kids that go out of the room, we're going to watch a movie. Why can't they watch it, but you can? <laughs> what, sir? <laughs> oh, you done meddling. I'm not meddling. I'm just pastoring. <laughs> I'm not saying all you ought to watch is, you know, like, let him go, let him go, or whatever. <laughs> Just be led by the Spirit. <laughs> huh? Listen, we're going to do a fast as a church till the end of December. It's just VeggieTales for everybody. VeggieTales, that's it. I'm talking Larry Boy and Larry Boy alone. <laughs> How big a boy are you? <laughs> Make me watch Larry Boy. <laughs> Well, I'll watch A.D. Okay, let's wrap this up. We're going to get out a little early. I know, I know, I know it's a problem. I know, but we're going to try to. Let's read one more on that. So that's how, that's how you get mature is by it, it, continual training in discernment. Continual training in discernment. You, listen, you have to be trained by the Spirit of God and the Word of God how to discern correctly because to follow God's plan listen, listen to me y'all some of you are right here on stepping into the next chapter listen, listen to me now that requires spiritual discernment when God has promised to make you king and somebody that is being used by Satan come on take you to many places in the Bible. Zadok is one of them, if you know who that is. And he comes up and he says, listen, I'll make you king. I'll give you the throne. Listen to me. You got to know, is this the spirit of God? I mean, it's my heart's desire. Listen to me. If you have to compromise, especially character, if you have to compromise endurance, if it don't take faith for you to do it, come on. 
it probably ain't God. Bible says they came to make Jesus king and he ran from them and ran up into the mountains and got alone with God. Why? Because the way promotion comes in the kingdom is this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his way of being and doing. And he will give you the desires of heart. He'll give you what you long for. Many times while you're believing for your heart's desires, your whole heart's desires will change as you get more intimate with God. All of a sudden, you don't have that desire no more. And the best place is when you finally come to grip of whatever God wants for me to do. I just want to be in the grace place. Whether it's making 100000 a year or whether it's sitting in my backyard because God said sit right here and make popsicle sticks and trust me to provide for you. I'll send the ravens to feed you. Come on, because I, I can have the same 100000 making and selling popsicle sticks if God told me to as I can trying to make my own way and be out of God's perfect will for my life. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm telling you, God is faithful. He will provide for you. Come on. Come on. He, listen. Well, what's he going to do? Have a stork drop a bag of money off on my port? Hey, all things are possible to him that believes. <laughs> Most of the time, it's been the body of Christ or people being good to me is when we fell into those times. Come on. Has God ever used a saint to get you out? Raise your hand. Come on. Yes. And he will. We're the body. We're, we're, we move the mountains. Come on. But to be able to discern it spiritually. Okay, last scripture. Uh, ooh, ooh, what's the one? Come on. I mean, we want to pull out the ace of spade right here. Come on. <laughs> Let's go to. Let's just end it with Proverbs 3. We'll end with here. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Verse 5 and 6. These are so good. It's good, church. Say we have 2020 vision. And we have the mind of Christ. Say I have spiritual discernment. I am not ruled by emotions. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Would you read it with me, please? We'll read 5 and 6. Read it with me, please. Ready? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We don't understand it all. God does. Ready? In all your ways, Acknowledge Him. Let's just be sensitive. Be sensitive to Him. This all the time. When you're using the bathroom, I'm serious. When you're getting dressed, when you're driving, when you pull up to the stoplight, especially when you shake somebody's hand, when you hug somebody. Say spiritual discernment. Listen, sometimes, a lot of times people will botch it up because they get the leading of God. They get the what, but they don't hold it before God till they get the when. Come on, y'all. So you got God's will, but you've not got God's time. So what people do is they get God's will, and they start trying to make it happen. Come on, make it happen. Hang on. Whoa, hold up. God don't drive. He don't whip. He leads. So you pray until you get the what, and then you hold that before God till you get the when. Because, listen, there's more than you to the puzzle. Just because you're in place doesn't mean that all the pieces are. Come on. 
and God, God's happened to, happened to get Fred and Tom and Sister Sally and Betty and Brenda, come on, whatever, to say yes to God too. Come on. We all get on the puzzle piece together. Now we've got a picture here. Come on. So that's why you can't just get God's will. You got to get his time too. These are huge maturity steps, I'm telling you. It's huge maturity. Got to be willing, listen, to trust God. Well, what if they don't let me? Are you, you're not trusting God, are you? I mean, my daddy is Mr. Starbucks. I ought to be out there working in heart rock. Listen, God's smart, and he speaks English, and he can tell us, Put her in heart rock. Come on, are you with me? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So, spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment. Especially as a pastor, you 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 have a an obligation. Number one, to be led by the Spirit, prepare you. Don't just prepare a message. Prepare you. That's top obligation. You prepare you. I tell myself that all the time. You prepare you. Come on. Come on. Don't just be in full-time ministry. Be a full-time Christian. Come on. Are you here, somebody? Well, I want to be in full-time ministry. You're not even a full-time Christian. Well, I think God's called me to full-time ministry. You don't, you're not, are you a full-time Christian? Come on. Are you here, anybody? Come on, we're wrapping it up. Well, God's called me. I don't need your approval. Well, be in this house, you will. You will need my approval, I promise you. If you're going to serve in leadership in this house, you're going to need that. Are you here, somebody? Come on, I mean, if we're just going to break it off like that, you're going to. God anoints me. Yeah, I place you. Are you here? Huh? I don't normally say things like this, but we're here. Come on. So you have to be willing to get pray until you get the what and then hold it before God. And listen, when you're desperate, it's easy to run with the what. <laughs> and you got to, mm -mm, I mean, you got to shackle your feet to, to the floor of God's will. No. Stand right here with God. Because listen, what's really happening is God is preparing me for that. Listen, listen, don't fall into the trap of thinking, come on, God, come on, God, come on, God. God ain't got no problem going and blowing the door wide open for you. Where he runs into challenges is pre getting you to let him prepare you for the open door. Huh? huh? Come on. That's where the training, that's where the training and learning to be, be sensitive is. I mean, I've just waited and waited on God, and it's like he's just not opening the door. Sounds like you're changing for the good. Sounds like you're learning to trust him. But I promise you, God is faithful. He wants better for you than you want better for you. Come on. Wonderful. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I promise you he will. Come on. Say, I trust in the Lord. Now everybody say, I trust in the Lord. With all my heart, I won't lean on my own understanding alone. I trust the Lord. He knows where I'm at. He speaks to my spirit. He shows me things to come. He'll give me the what, and he'll give me the when. 
and I will fulfill his plan for my life by spiritually discerning his voice. Thank you, Father. God bless you today. So glad you're here today. Been a wonderful time in the Lord today. Just a short gathering. Equip each other. Love on each other. And go about our business. Come on. Acknowledge him. I promise you. I believe some of you see breakthrough this week. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just a minor adjustment. Breakthrough. Come on. Breakthrough. Come on. Breakthrough. The voice of God, the will of God, one word from God can change your life forever, forever. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be safe. Be led by the Spirit. We'll see you soon.